Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Hans Walter from Fraunhofer AZM, and I would like to present some results about reliability aspects of stretchable electronic application. I would like to give some information about how to test the system, what can be used for the reliability aspects, and so on. This is stretchable substrate. We can divide it, the substrate to two different kinds. The first, on the left side, you see the rigid is a very classical FR4 material. In the middle, we have a flexible that can be used for the textile. And on the right side, you can see the stretchable. And the challenge for these materials is we have a combination of two different materials. On the one hand, we have a stretchable material, the polymer. And on the other hand, we have a metal conductive materials, for example here, copper. The question is, how do work this kind of materials together? Before I start with my present, I would like to give some pictures you can see for the application. We can use the combination metal and polymer for different kind of wearable, for medical, for industrial application. The question is, what are the best structure, the best combination of metal, of polymer by using of the loading. Loading means we have the cycling loading, we have the stretch loading. Stretching means we can strain to 100, 250%. And what are the, do, the copper line inside on the polymer system? What I would like, we would like to integrate the electrical conductive materials with the flexible, and we would like to optimize the real structure could be meander structure or the other one for the specific electronic application. Specific means for the medical, for the wearable, or the other one. Before we start, you can see here a picture. We have uh, two materials. We have a copper line, this is a yellow line, and we have a polymer system. You see here we have the meander structure for the copper and we have the structural polymer. And we use a tool, a finite simulation tool, as a software for the optimization of the design of the different copper traces. Before we start for the experimental, you can see here the fabrication process. This was presented for uh, some lecture before. We have a lamination, the polyurethane, for example. We have a copper foil. We bring it together. What you see here in the middle on the right side, which kind of meander structure can be used that we can reach a long strain of the combination copper and polymer system. For example, here for the meander structure, you can see on the right side the horseshoe or the sinus like geometry. This is the focus of this talk. What is the best structure for copper traces? You can see here six different geometry of meander, of copper meander. They have a variation of radius, we have a variation of length, and we have a variation of the uh, amplitude. And the question is for the specific application, what are the best structure of copper inside of the polymer system? For the optimization, we use the help of the simulation tool. You can see here in the middle the typical picture. We have a colorized model of the duck bone. Duck bone is a classical sample geometry for the tensile test. We have the inside the copper meander structure. And you can see here the different uh, picture. We use the submodeling and so on. And what we need for the simulation, we need uh, th um, the model that describes this um, fatigue behavior or the cycling behavior. And what we need also for this model, we need uh, accurate materials data that we would like to determine or we use by the uh, experimental methods. For determination of the accurate materials data, the first one we would like to analyze, we would like to characterize the materials properties. For this first step, we use the pure polymer system, polyurethane, or the second part is the copper line. What you see here is the dark bone, this is the typical test sample geometry for the material characterization. In the second part, we have a combination, polyurethane and copper, that we use for the lifetime cycling, loading for the different amplitude, for different uh, uh, frequency, and both materials data, lifetime testing result we use for the modeling. And you see in the middle of the diagram, the typical Coffey-Menzen diagram for the determination of the lifetime model. 
With the materials characterization, we would like to describe the st strain properties, delta epsilon, and for the lifetime cycle, we would like to determine the critical value of failure, the NF. This parameter together, we would like to analyze the parameter C1 and C2, and all of them, four parameter, NF, C1, C2, and delta epsilon, we use for the modeling of the lifetime. In this slide, you see some results. On the left side, the red curve, there's the typical curve for copper. This show, we say, the elastic plastic properties. The first of this curve is the elastic behavior, and the second part is the plastic behavior. And on the right side, you see the very long stretch materials. There's a non-elastic deformation from polyurethane. We say this material shows the hyperelastic behavior. If you compare both material, the red curve is the copper and the blue curve is the hyperelastic behavior, you can see the quite different of the material's properties. And this is the challenge to analyze the combination polyurethane and copper for the lifetime modeling. And the question is how to determine the hyperelastic behavior. The tensile test is not sufficient to analyze the whole material's properties. For analyze the hyperelastic properties, or we say the nonlinear stress strain behavior for the polyurethane, we would like to describe this material by means of strain energy density function W. And we would like to analyze the different parameters. You can see here on the strain invariance E1, E2, E3, how to determine this critical or this material's properties. You can see here the different mechanical test methods. We have the uniaxial tensile, there's a planar tension, or the biaxial tension methods. Biaxial means we have a one test and we analyze the deformation field in two different directions, y and x. For analysis of the nonlinear stress spring behavior, we would like to determine the hyperelastic properties. And that of a use, we would like to describe these properties by means of the strain energy density function. What you see here on the right side, the tensile and biaxial tension results, you have three different curves, the blue and near green. This is the area between the deformation field, we say the multi-axial deformation field, and that is what we also determine with the red curve, the biaxial tension test. But altogether, we can describe the materials properties for the hyperelastic materials or for the nonlinear stress strain behavior for the wide range for the description of the multi-axial deformation field. How to determine this biaxial materials properties? You can use a conventional biaxial tension tester, or you can also develop our own measurement system. We have developed in our lab the equi-biaxial test method. We use the convention, conventional test equipment and developed a scissor-like test system. You can see here on the right side. And on the left side, we have a combination loading devices and optical inspection systems that we will like to describe the materials properties for the biaxial deformation field. You can see here, we have a camera system, we have a test sample in the middle of this picture, and we have the acre biaxial construction, the scissor-like construction. On the right side, for the analysis of the hyperelastic properties, polyurethane, you can see here the sample geometry. We have on the four corners uh, fixation. In the middle, you have uh, the polyurethane. These results show we're using the optical inspection system. We pick out some slide for the deformation field. We use also a software, another software, the grayscale correlation software, for the describe, describe the deformation fields. The name is the FedEx system. And then we can also analyze simultaneous deformation in two different directions, vertical and horizontal part. In the middle of this picture, you see the strain vector, that is the results of the grayscale correlation method. They have also in the right, the blue and green has the deformation field of the deformation of the polyurethane inside of the sample geometry. What we use for the simulation, what we use for the prediction of the lifetime, this is the area of this diagram. 
as you can, on the right side, we have um, the horizontal versus vertical deformation. That is what we use this stress strain curve for the simulation tools for the biaxial material properties. We can determine the material parameter. We can model this deformation properties by both tensile and equibiased test systems. And by using of the different models, for example, Mooney rhythm models, we can also describe this materials properties for the whole of deformation, multi-axial deformation, and so on. You can see here the typical curve for the tensile test. You can see also the curve for the equibiaxial test method. And we can also use both curves by using of the Mooney rhythm model to describe this materials properties. This is important for the simulation. What we have, we have some experimental results for polyurethane by using of uh, hyperelastic properties. We have materials for the copper for to describe the elastic plastic properties. What we need is the data for the lifetime modeling. That is used by the lifetime cycle test method. This is a combination for the sample, polyurethane and copper. And for the variation of amplitude, for evaluation of frequency, we could like to determine the critical value of numbers of failure. You can see in the middle of this diagram um, the coffee menson model and what we would like to determine with this materials data, the parameter C1 and C2. That is important for the simulation later uh, for the finite element modeling. For the lifetime testing, we need some results for the different strain level. It could be the amplitude, could be the frequency. What we also use is the calculation by using of the materials data for the tensile or biaxial test for the analysis of the strain and elastic plastic or elastic plastic strain. And we have both parameters, plastic strain and cycle of failure. And then can we, by using of this materials data analyze the materials par parameter C1 and C2. On this slide, you see some results. On the left side, the typical geometry, that is the combination of the polyurethane and copper. You can get on the tensile, the loading tester. And in the middle, you see the cycling sample with the meander structure. Or what you see, you have a change of the color from dark gray to gray. And that is the first sign for changing of the materials properties. The diagram on the right side, you can see also you have the maximum strain was calculated by simulation tools and the cycles of to failure, the, the NF. And you can see here on this diagram the different geometry. And this was a question, what are the best geometry for the specific application? You can see here the different points of this diagram. And this point we are using, or this diagram we are using for the analysis of the parameter C1 and C2. The finite element simulation tool. What you see here on the left side, we have the grayscale, we have the critical area of the loaded sample by experiment. And the blue picture, you can see, you can also calculate the critical area of also the same meander structure. This is a very good result that we have the same critical area of meander structure for special uh, copper meander traces. In the middle, you can see we have the variation, the finite element simulation to its specific mesh characteristic, how to determine the critical value, how you use the mesh. That is the specific for the simulation tool. This is the experience for the simulation tools. What's kind of the best mesh we're using for the scribe of materials properties. On the right side, you see the experimental data for the cycling loading. And on the bottom side, you see the results of the finite simulation tools. You have also on the top side, on the bottom side, the gray area, there's the critical value. That is for the loading, uh, the prediction of the critical lifetime for this meander structure or for this geometry. We have materials data, we have calculated the plastic strain, we have measured the critical value of numbers to failure, and now we can detect the parameter C1 and C2, for example here, 0.21 and 2.54, and with this data we can also analyze 
the critical value by using of the simulation tools for the variation of the meander structure. I came back, we have a variation, six different types of meander structure. We have variated the radius, we have variated the length, we have a strain level, could be 5%, it's not too much for the polyurethane, it's a very high value for the copper, and we're using the design of experiments, methods for description of the critical area for the simulation. We use this diagram, coffee manson diagram, we have the term, the parameter C1 and C2, as well now the less plastic part. On this diagram, you can see here, for example, meander D, there's a radius 0.5 millimeters, the length 5.5. You can see it's only near the gray, uh, green or red area, a little bit critical path, and you can variation of the radius, you can now variation by length, and you can find the variation of the big radio or the long length is optimized for the geometry of this meander structure or strap level of 5%, for example. You can also variate other geometry, you don't some experiment data that is advanced by using of the simulation tools. I would like to conclude my talk. I have shown some results by experimental data and by simulation data. I would like to give why we use or why it is needed to use the AQV bioxide test system. That is a um, very fine test method for analysis of the hyperelastic properties like rubber like for the polyurethane. We can also use the tensile test, standard test for analysis of copper system. We bring together copper and polyurethane with the lifetime cycle test methods by using of the coffee manson model, we can also describe the critical value of amplitude by using or by the term of the uh, numbers of failure. And this both all data we use for the simulation. And now we can, without changing of the geometry, analyze for the specific application. For example, we have changing of the meander structure or what are the best meander structure we have the changing of the thickness, we have the changing of the length, and so on. But by using only the simulation tools that we have very high cost efficient and time efficient uh, prediction for the best uh, meander structure for specific applications. Thank you very much for your listening. I hope you have some question. You added uh, the Q&A. I'm looking forward uh, for the next time. Thank you.